when people do had a heart attack. Statistically, if you let your carry on, then you lose 10 years of your life. Who's this Harvinder Singh? Started off 20 odd years ago as a pharmacist and through certain circumstances I learned to unlearn all of my pharmacy and learn more about functional medicine and a natural progression into longevity and biohacking. Tell me what it felt like when you got your test results back and they weren't good. That really hit me hard. A doctor had a, a conversation with me, said, do you want to be here or do you want to be watching from up above? You've got a three to six month window to reverse your... Oh shit. Do you think things happen for a reason? You've got to think about what DNA do you want to pass on to the next generation so you can actually reduce genetic problems that you're going to pass on to your children. Wow. So anyone considering fertility, I would definitely recommend getting how can this serve a bigger purpose? So it's like having new batteries. So you've got one year older, but your body's become two years younger. Some people think this is You'll feel it in those areas where you've got any issues, gut health issues, if you've got stress going on, anxiety. Definitely want to encourage more people to... I don't know if people are doing that enough. There's just a huge amount of people out there who are undiagnosed. Good starting point is. I'm Ben Edwards, and you're listening to The Heart of It. A few years ago, life humbled me and made me take a long, hard look at my choices. One day, you're going to hear a lot of things about me. Some of those things I can't talk about right now, but I had to make a lot of changes. I lived a life fueled by shame, and shame cannot survive being spoken about. It needs these three things to survive secrecy silence and judgment. So I made the decision to start talking about these things and I'd like to invite you to listen to how that played out. This is the therapy that I never thought that I needed. Let's get to the heart of it. Harvey Ender Singh, welcome to the heart of it. Thank you, Ben. Good to see you. And to you. I know you've got a disclaimer to say before we get going. Yeah, so um, as a, an NHS pharmacist, um, yeah, that's my primary role. However, any opinions here are, are, are more from experience and the other courses, so not as not representing the NHS pharmacy side. Well done. Legal requirement done. Tell us, uh, tell us how we know it, Joy. So we met mainly um, in the gym, but I think it was we were friends of friends. Um, I think you were on a bit of a, a health journey. Um, you're, you're in really good shape. You wanted to take your fitness level uh, further and it's what we do. Mm. We have people who've got health issues and then we have people who are already really doing well and then we take them even further. So you say we, with that going, we'll talk obviously all about the NAD, the IVs and everything else in a bit more detail in a bit, but tell us like what, who, who you are, what you do. So I started off 20 odd years ago as a, a pharmacist and then um, through certain circumstances, um, I learned to unlearn all of my pharmacy and um, we had to learn more about functional medicine and um, a, a naturopath and then also a natural progression into longevity and biohacking. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. I work in a, an NHS pharmacy in, in a city centre uh, in Nottingham uh, in the Midlands and when when Ben when you first came, you, it looks like a normal pharmacy to be at the front, and then we have all of these rooms at the back where we do all the the blood tests and the, the gut health testing and all of that. And yeah, we just take things further. So people who are listening to this, right? They've just turned this on. They're like, obviously they've heard me before. They're like Ben. You now he's talking to people. They're like, who's this Harvinder Singh? What would you describe yourself as? Pharmacist? I would say not as a not as a pharmacist anymore so yes i am a, a qualified pharmacist but i've learned to take things way further um in ter in terms of health and look at the body as a whole system uh, when you go to your doctor when you go to have certain symptoms they look at one particular thing we look at the whole body as a, a system um, and not just the actual external symptoms or what someone's feeling uh, we take it to the biohacking level, we take it to cellular level, um, and we and we fix things um, on that sort of scale. Yeah, when I first met you, so I was trained, I think I was just started the Ironman training. I've had IV drips before, sort of the normal Myers-Briggs boosters. 
and I felt pretty run down. I think it was just leading into Christmas or just after Christmas to not like the one that's just gone, yep. the one before that, so 2022 Christmas. And I googled IV Nottingham. I don't think it was the best Googling search. I'm sure people are competing for that term. But I tried to call some or go through the websites. And uh, for me, coming from a digital marketing background and you know, knowing SEO and stuff, some people's obviously business, like the way they do business, we discussed this, don't really know how to get themselves into those positions where someone like yourself would pop up, like exactly what I'm looking for. And I think I, I rang... And I said, can I come like right now? And I always, I always kind of realize that when I'm saying things like this, people don't think you're serious often when you're like, I want this thing and I'll come right now. Yeah. And I think you literally said, if you can be here at like this time, like within the next 20 minutes, I'll do it today. And I was like, right. I literally left David Lloyd and came straight away to you. As you quite rightly said, the pharmacy is on Glasshouse Street, which is near UFC in yep. Nottingham, near the Victoria Center. And I mean, people who don't know Nottingham, it's, it's obviously in the center of town. It's not too far away from estates that are not like West Bridgeford. It's the political term. So it doesn't, it just looks like a normal pharmacy on a corner of a, a street. As, as you said, went in. I was like, am I in the right place? I'm like expecting some bougie looking IV studio, which is there just behind, right? So you go through the, you go through the special secret passage. There's no secret passage, it's just normal. And then there's, you've got, no, nice comfort reclining chairs, TV, it's kitted out. And then we had quite the conversation, I remember it. You said to me, most people come to you, although you do get some clients like myself, but you get most people coming to you because they're ill or poorly, something's wrong. Although I was feeling run down, I was high, you know, in a peak physical condition, really, in the grand scheme of things, health-wise, or so I think. Yeah, you are. And we had a conversation about the IV drips, and you told me the differences between this one, that one, and all of the things in between. Obviously, and I'm, I'm always quite interested whether people are actually experts in what they do or are they just selling the thing off the shelf that they know that people want to buy. And obviously, you've got a lot of knowledge. And then the, the, the combining different things, depending on what the symptoms or the circumstances are. Then you said, but there's one more thing. Whenever anyone says there's one more thing, you're like, oh, tell me. And you told me about NAD. I'd heard of NAD, but you'd started to tell me about NAD. And that's what most people, when they ask me about what I've done and what I do, I tell them about they're interested in. Because they've heard it on podcasts. They've heard it if they've been listening to sort of high performance health things or whatever. They've heard about NAD. And you obviously love the stuff. So tell me about NAD. NAD has been around for, um, for a few years and it started off as um, in addiction clinics. Um, in Brazil, they were doing these treatments, sort of more consecutive treatments, um, and they found that it reduced addiction. It's a, a, a vitamin B derivative. Uh, so what NAD does is this parts of our cells uh, called mitochondria and are really important in energy production. So it will go into your body and find damaged mitochondria and it begins to get rid of any damaged ones and then it repairs any good ones and then it sort of supercharges the, the mitochondria. So it's like having new batteries. You've got these mitochondria in all parts of your body, especially in your central nervous system, your brain, um, your heart, everywhere. So it is, it's really hard to describe, but you've experienced this feeling. So mm -hmm. it is a little bit like having like a biological scan, like an MRI scan in a way, because when we plug you into this, when we do vitamin C, wellness Myers, if I do it slightly slower or faster, you don't really notice a difference. And um, we control the drip rate. When we do NAD, it is in a whole different category. So you physically feel where you've got any issues. So if you've got any gut health issues, if you've got stress going on, anxiety, you'll feel it in those areas. So it is like a scan. So you will, people are, what I, I tell people to do is, is just chill, feel where you can actually, where, where is this going? And I've had patients who say well, historical injuries, Achilles or the thighs or shoulder injuries, and they will physically feel it going there as it's starting to repair it. And in a way it's a little bit uncomfortable, but that's a good thing because you want to see where is it going. 
People often notice tight chestedness because of all the pollution we've got um, in, in the air, in, in inner cities. Um, people notice um, often I get a really sort of tight head. I can tell, run a busy, busy pharmacy and um, busy business, so I've got a lot going on. Mm. You can feel it there. People feel it in all different places, but then once you've had the drip, um, some people describe it as the top of a roller coaster you're about to go down. It's a bit of a strange feeling. I get people to put it into words and it's difficult to to say that. Mm. After Effects is absolutely awesome. So it's starting to fix all these things, um, but also people notice their, their mind is way more focused. So once I had to do um, some quite intense work online, my wife said to me, you've just sat there for four hours straight in the zone so you didn't need a break you didn't feel like you needed a break um and i and i noticed that i, I could actually feel everything going into my brain um it was an awesome feeling um but also you've got the the energy energy production um feel way more vitality and many patients see that see that eyesight get better and overall um so our levels of nad start to go down from about 20 to 25 years onwards and so that's when aging starts to happen. So if we replace NAD, um, especially at a higher level, then it's it's also reducing aging as well. So people notice they sleep better, they feel better. Um, one of the, the, the great things, so in, as well as the energy side of it, we see people say less gray hairs, they've got their skins better. Um, so all of these things, and it's actually a phenomenon where People notice that the hairs that are beginning to, to get grey, the, the root of the hair starts going back to your natural colour. That's when you know you're at that alignment where all of the things, especially when you do that with all the diet, the exercise and all of the things that we know we're supposed to be doing, this was like the missing piece of the jigsaw. Interesting. I bet people are listening to that and thinking that is some voodoo bullshit. 100%. I thought if someone would have said this to me 10, 15 years ago, I would, wouldn't have believed it. However, the evidence is there. And now the, as time progresses, there's people like um, Dave Sinclair who talk about um, all the actual, the, the biohacking on um, the actual sirtuins and, and those levels. Mm. Um, so he's worked out where it works in the body and why it works. And he's got mice that are supposed to live a few years and they're living for a decade they're living for a lot longer he's got experiments going on with different things and there's different things we can do uh, with the body but it's when we put all these things together it's like a padlock and it's mm. all of a sudden more aligned yeah i, I talked to bit. obviously people ask me about performance a lot like you asked me quite a lot of questions when we're you know sat there doing the ivs over the period of time so i did a course right yes so i had first one i had was i think it was just a booster and then I had one NAD and then I came back four NADs over the period of like two to three weeks. Yeah. So I'll talk about that in just a second. I'm open-minded to things. So when you started talking about some optimum innovation, I was like, sign me up. There, that feeling is, it is hard to describe. I know another you know friend of mine came to see you not that long ago and uh, he texted me saying, um, you were right. Like, I was like, I mean, this has been many times he has asked me about things and I've told him things and then he does them and he goes, you're right. Like surprised. I only do things that work. I'll try things and I won't do them again if I don't find they work. I think there's a combination effect because I'm, I'm quite a high performer in my own opinion. So the small things like delaying coffee for me with the adenosine receptors in the morning makes an enormous difference to me at two o'clock in the afternoon. When you get up at five and you go like I do, you know the systems that your body's running on because if I move something 15 minutes later or 15 minutes earlier, I will yeah. see that effect in my schedule in terms of my cognitive performance yeah. or physical performance almost immediately. So having a high threshold for feedback is so you know helpful to me because I can see what does and does not work or contribute. And then if you start, as you said, a padlock, it's almost like a, a puzzle with a combination. Yeah. Where you're trying to like see like okay that then this and i recall after that fourth fifth nad close together i think that was just leading into the iron man yeah and then i i really helped my training and i'll talk about that in a moment but after that that must have been the most productive period of my life 
must I think it was a seven weeks, eight week period. And I think there was the knock on of like having no Iron Man. So I wasn't training 15, 16 hours a week. Yeah. Also micro dosing, also my ADHD tablets, also all the other things that I do, which my diet's 100%, my training's almost 100%. Like yeah. I'm pretty much up there. But I, like, this is how this thing happened, right? I literally did this all in a space of, you know, that, that same period of time. And as you said about sitting there for four hours and just being able to go, like I call that the flow state. How do you get into the flow state versus sitting and looking at an email for four hours that you're not even sure what you're saying versus when everything just comes? My training routine has always been a big part of my life and managing recovery and injury prevention has never been more of a focus of mine. Trying to maintain energy for the long sessions whilst making sure my mind is also kept on top form to continue all of the commitments that my schedule demands. That's why having the support of Harvinder at Glasshouse Pharmacy has been a real game changer. Harvinder has been with us from the very start, regularly topping me and the team up with the latest state-of-the-art IV drips. These treatments really are the real deal. Used by elite athletes, entrepreneurs, and even cancer patients to boost performance, aid recovery, and keep you going strong. Whether it's improving sleep, enhancing overall health, or even supporting symptoms related to the menopause, Harvinder and his team have got something for everyone. And just for to the heart of it, listeners, Harvinder has put together something special. To claim your exclusive offer, go to theheartofitpodcast.com forward slash sponsors, where you can download the Get IV offer. Thanks to Harvinder and Glasshouse Get IV for helping us stay healthy, energized, and keeping the podcast running strong. And since being a guest on the podcast, Harvinder and our team have been working on Harvinder's very own podcast, Behind the Symptoms, where Harvinder discusses all the IV drips and their health benefits amongst much more. If you want to check out Behind the Symptoms, you can just visit theheartofitpodcast.com forward slash behind the symptoms. Thanks to Harvinda again. How do you get into the flow state versus sitting and looking at an email for four hours that you're not even sure what you're saying versus when everything just comes? Definitely. So you've just talked about um, the difference. You were already an elite athlete and it took you even further. Mm. So we've got people so you took it on the athletic side we've got business people we've got um other sports um, people who want to to take things further and and they've noticed if you've got increased energy you can have all the money in the world you can have all of these things in, in good health but if you haven't got the energy and you haven't got the the mind focus um then you haven't really got anything so mm. this gives you We've seen people who've who've found, like for example, golfers. They they can focus more, they can train more in the gym, so mm. their fitness is better. But ultimately, you've got more energy for your for your family, for your mm. for your lifestyle, mm. all of the things. Whether it is sports, whether it is um, business decisions. If you're making big decisions, like you said, you've you've built this amazing amazing place um, in that period. Mm. It is a weird feeling though. So. People don't like needles, first of all. So it is a needle. It's in a like a bag, like an IV drip, yep. like you would have at hospital for saline, for example. It's normally, you, you mix the solution, you put it together, it goes in. People, as you said, you could change the, the dose rate or you could change all the speed. People wouldn't notice the difference of it going in. Yeah. This is immediately, you feel the chest, I feel the chest. Yeah. The chest starts to feel like there's a breathing thing. And this is a similar, you know, bodybuilders listen to this, they've taken Trembolone. You first inject that. There's a something happens to your lungs where you want a cough called trend cough. Yeah, and it's uh, it's not it's not the same as that. There is a similarity in something's happening to your oxygen intake, and then you're sitting there and you're trying to you know I'm just trying to cool my mind. You know, almost meditate to to kind of process what's happening, and you feel it going. And when I say feel it going, it's like something is inside your veins, which obviously it is going to the places that are painful. So lower back, for example, my left knee had a bit of a problem at the time with training. Yeah. I could feel something happening inside my body. As you said, the same head thing as well, like a little bit dizzy, a bit nauseous. And this lasted the entire time. You constantly asked me to let you know if it was too much because there's a speed setting on the, the bags. Um, but it also, your body pulls it down. Is that correct? In terms of it, it sucks it at a certain speed or can suck it at a certain speed? Yeah, so it depends on your veins. People can take it slightly faster and slower, and it also depends on your ability to 
tolerate it as well. So I, I generally say to people, we want to keep it between level one and six out of 10 mm. in uncomfortableness. Um, so we'll, we'll try and tailor that dosage. And then there are people who can take it a little bit faster. I've got, actually got twin boys. Uh, they're now 19 years old and one of them can take it a lot quicker than the other one. Um, but then now, sometimes when they do it, when they do a NAD, uh, we, we take it home sometimes and I've got a, a, a drip stand where they'll sit side by side and do it. And it's a little bit of a, a macho thing. They'll still see how quick they can do it. And one of the aspects of, of a NAD is how quick can you do it and tolerate it. And actually, Ben's also got our record for, <laughs> for uh, the quickest NAD. So tell us about, I knew this, obviously I'm smirking because I knew this was coming. So the record, when we when you first told me about it, it was like, what, an hour and something? I thought I was quick um, to do a whole NAD for an hour and 10, and that was being able to tolerate it. The more you have it, you can also tolerate it better because your body's more repaired. Um, and I think it might have been your second, well, your times were already beating me. Um, you could tolerate it quicker, and I think you got down to... 33 minutes. Yeah, which so is... For a whole NAD, for a high strength, 750 milligrams of NAD, that is super fast. <laughs> that is being able to tolerate it. So that's not not seen. So people generally, on a scale of things, people can do half a NAD in an hour and a half to two hours. Often, some people can take five, six hours to do a whole NAD. To do it in that was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, so I did that if I, I'm sure that was the first time or the second time, because I think one, it was one time it was 47, and you were like, what is that? And it just got faster and faster and faster. I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting there and my body was just taking it. So you almost used me a bit of experiment, right, to see what it was going to be like to give it to someone who's training like I was for that particular thing and see what actually happened. Yes. And it was quite the, it was quite the result, right? I remember coming for the second one of that four or five series. And again, people think this is bollocks. But I'm not really, I'm not, well, I'm not bullshitting in the sense of if things are rubbish, I'm like, well, yeah, it's all right. But I remember going out on a bike ride that, that weekend, a six, five, six hour bike ride. And the week before, I was wayward. Like sometimes, you know, people who train like this would know there were just some times where you're like, this has got to, I want to end this. The week after, I went out and I hit like a wicked, it wasn't like a time sprint, but it was just, I felt like a different, I take you, I think, halfway through. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? Like to be obviously training at that high level anyway. The marginal gains usually are exactly that marginal gains. Yeah, this was another level. Like I only one level. There was multiple levels. I could pedal for longer, for faster, in the arrow position on a bike on a you know, TT bike, and just not notice. And I was like, because I was conscious of this because of yeah. what happened, I was consciously verbalizing this to you, like fucking hell, like what is going on? And then obviously that was only halfway through, and it continued. But we are training a lot. Yeah. And I had COVID in the middle of it. And I then still obviously went to do that, you know, it was a lot. <laughs> it was quite, and then I say, all of the training ended. And then the cognitive thing was also just unparalleled. But I do think it's a combination effect of other things. I don't think someone else, I mean, happy to be wrong if someone else feels the effect, but I think it is combined yeah. with all the other things like, you know, the recovery, cold plunge, treatments, massage, et cetera, training, diet everything else i don't think it's uh i mean but then i then i say this i've met quite a lot of people sat in those seats with you who are coming for a completely different reason like i was there the other day with a colleague of mine yeah and we met that lovely lady i won't mention her name because she doesn't want to be mentioned but she obviously was talking about ms yeah and how this has changed her life of course yeah and that's like completely different so someone else listening to this who's like, I'm not an Iron Man. This is no relevance to me. I'm not a business person. I don't care about cognitive performance. Tell me about some of the health things like people like her. So because it's fixing, it's finding the issues, uh, it's going to, to help those things. Exactly what you just pointed out. It's like a Rubik's Cube. So when you change one aspect, it's got knock-on effects to other things as well. So when we're doing several different things, like you're already on the diet and these things, um, so in terms of when we have people with illnesses, we have a lot of people with um, non-specific health symptoms like brain fog, insomnia. Um, the, the, the doctors call it chronic fatigue, these, these aspects where they don't know what's happening. They put them on amitriptyline, pregabalin, these type of medicines, um, but they, they can't, they're not really fixing them. They're not getting to the root of the problem, whereas mm. NAD will begin to do this. 
in isolation it it does something but when you do all of the other things so we now go into a lot of detail with diet exercise the, the basics but we give people more detailed advice about what is a good diet which oils to use why fruit is not so good for us and and all of those aspects but when you get all of those aspects um and also you've got the diagnosis of we've looked at their gut health their their blood tests and all of these things together um one of the the things which i'm really grateful for is as a pharmacist is um how to take a really detailed patient um past medical history but when you go to the doctors or look at that, that one thing at the moment but we'll go into a lot of detail the timeline of what happened it's generally a big stress event a particular virus or an environmental thing or antibiotics or illness from the past so i've learned to hone those skills and take a, a very quick a detailed focused history on mm. on somebody so when we put all this together like a detective like a health detective mm. that's the beauty of it because we can pick we can begin to piece together what's going to be the best course of action whether it is just dietary changes or the right supplements and if necessary IV drips and it's not necessarily NAD sometimes it's the high dose vitamin C or glutathione or the wellness myers or or different different aspects sometimes it's B12 mm. um but it's just putting all these things together ticking the boxes a lot of the women that I've come in with you've given glutathione to tell me about that glutathione is again it's naturally occurring it's in our liver so when we have paracetamol alcohol our body will produce a little bit of glutathione um, so what we do is we give a high dose of this, but it does different things in terms of the body's using it as a bit of a detox. When we give a high dose, it's an intense detox. It goes into the actual cells and binds onto any heavy metals and toxins, takes them out of the body. So it's it's a really, really intense, like a magnet getting onto all these things and then you'll wear it out over the, you'll excrete it over the next few days. Um, it's also... Uh, a really potent antioxidant or the oxidative damage from pollution sun um all of these aspects and it helps to to detox that as well um it's also boosts your immune system as well one of the things uh, women like it especially even myself um it's a skin brightener as mm. well so it makes your skin because it's detoxing even your skin it's also at high doses combined with vitamin c and it's it's a really good um skin brightener Women listening to this thinking, perfect. Also, you've mentioned hormonal things. You've talked about, and I think there are people there before who've been sort of premenopausal or menopausal in terms of the hormone imbalances. How do all these sorts of IV and sort of functional health things in play with that, those symptoms? So it's a natural part of, of aging. So the NAD, it's taking things back a little bit. So I don't know if you've heard of the, the Horvath. Um, clock so it is to do with our actual not our chronological age our biological age of our body mm -hmm. so it's reversing that a little bit so it is taking things back um, a stage in terms of our body so as we get older yes for for men there's changes testosterone different things with women it's the hormonal side of things so it's taking things back it's also repairing it's also reducing inflammation lots of the, the pains the cramps and the symptoms they get uh, we do that, but we also combine it with, um, yeah, the glutathione um, and just make sure the body is is a lot more at peace um, mm -hmm. inside. Um, and we've got colleagues who do different aspects. So we also do, we've got a, an expert on um, medicinal mushrooms, the, the big range of those. We've got people who do colonics. We've got people who do ozone. So we, we find and tailor the right package, um, the right treatment for that person. Mm. Is this also useful for fertility? Yes. Uh, so by reducing inflammation, um, then it is making your body a lot more um, in terms of at peace uh, so inside. In terms of the environment that the body's in. That's right. And the glutathione will also help to take out toxins and things. But one of the big things that we're sort of... Um, focusing on at the moment is so we all know that sort of a, a plant-based diet helps to repair our DNA so a lot of couples are are also doing so we do the supplements and that side of it but they're also going more plant-based for six months to a year before they decide to conceive because if 
you think about it, on the day of conception, it's the DNA from the male and the female, the sperm and the egg, which will go on to produce the the offspring and their, their your children and your children's children for generations. Mm -hmm. And so, so I'm from a, a, an Indian background, so we naturally have diabetes, high blood pressure. We've got that in our genetics. What I've learned is that by going more plant-based and, and getting your body in a better state, your DNA is repairing, you can actually take away some of those aspects that you're passing on to your children um, and repair and skip generations. So you can actually reduce the actual problems and the genetic problems that you're going to pass on to your children. So it's like a CD that's been that had a few scratches and it's actually repairing it. So you're passing on the information to your children that's that's better. Wow. So anyone considering fertility, I would definitely recommend getting on more of a plant-based diet, especially for that period of conception. Yes, glutathione, NAD, they, they help, um, but the full package, when you do everything together, you've got to think about what DNA do you want to pass on to the next generation. Mm. If I knew this before, I would have done this years ago, so my kids are a little bit older now, mm. um, but I I would definitely recommend this, and I do recommend this to, to couples who are trying for a baby to yeah, get your body in. Yeah, I had a chat with um, a young, young guy this week. Um, who he was only young, but his body was. He was, I think he was twenty. He's already getting lots of grey hair. He was already. You could tell that his body had lots of inflammation from external signs. You could tell. Um, so, I had a chat with him and said, "Look, you're in the next few years. You're going to be considering this, all these aspects, and what do you want to be passing on to your children and." There was smoking involved and different things. So, but we had a, a long chat and it, it really sort of opened his eyes. Mm. So, speaking of men, then we talked about hormone replacement. What's the situation with men in this situation with testosterone, as you say, fading as they get older? So, testosterone is a, an issue that I've really been thinking about myself. So, yes, a lot of people are into TRT at the moment. Um, TRT being um, testosterone replacement therapy. So they're into that. However, my um, the jury's still out at the moment with myself because you can increase testosterone by reducing stress by the right exercise, exercising your your big muscles um, in your body. So you can naturally increase your testosterone by increasing testosterone with uh, replacement therapies. There are some side effects as well um, in terms of um, well. Testes are your prostate, um, you can get prostate symptoms and increase certain cancer risks and certain other factors and it can change into oestrogen. Um, but my primary goal is longevity and health, like the blue zones. So I want to give people long life and good health. Um, and testosterone actually goes against that a little bit. But with the NAD, we're actually taking things back and we're recharging our batteries and doing other things in other ways. Mm -hmm. So we're naturally stimulating the testosterone and giving people energy um, and libido, which is one of the big factors why people take testosterone because low libido. For men and women, NAD will definitely increase it. And I've had women, it's a, a bit of a, a running joke, but they will say, a, a lady said the words, I actually felt like a wolf. I, I felt like a predator. Um, my libido was so high. <laughs> Yeah, I can uh, imagine some people be uh, attracted by that idea. Some people are like, no, thank you, no more, <laughs> depending on their own uh, preference. So that's where you are now, right? Pharmacist running that business and you, you're sounding like, you know, you're much more clearer now on the offer and the packages and, and how you do this than when we met, you know, first of all, a year or so ago. Where did it all begin? You mentioned Indian background and people have told me many times about their cultural upbringing, doctor, lawyer, that sort of range. Here you are doing what you're doing. Tell me about your upbringing. As most of you know, my diet is pretty strict most of the time. So it makes it even more important to me that when I have a cheat meal, it delivers. There is nothing worse than ordering a takeaway and it being wrong, missing items, or just not being what you expected or you hoped for. That's why having the support of Kasim from Bombay Joe's Bingham has been a game changer. Kasim has been a supporter of the podcast from the very beginning providing all the food for the launch party. And we recently went to see Kasim and the team at Bombay Joe's Bingham, a takeaway restaurant that's a modern inspired take on Indian street food. 
opening six days a week, 5 p.m. till late, based in Bingham, Nottingham, and can deliver to a wide radius, including West Bridgeford, serving all of your favorite curries and classic Indian dishes, Kasim has got you covered. And Kasim has put together an exclusive offer just for To The Heart of It listeners. To claim your exclusive offer from Kasim, just visit theheartofitpodcast.com forward slash sponsors, where you can download the Bombay Joe's Bingham app and get your exclusive offer code. As a thank you to Kasim, our team has put together a special social media pack, which you can check out on their social media on Instagram at Bombay Joe's Bingham, where you can find their latest menus and give them a follow. You mentioned Indian background, and people have told me many times about their cultural upbringing, doctor, lawyer, that sort of range. Here you are doing what you're doing. Tell me about your upbringing. So family had nothing to do with sort of the medical background. And then a few of the, my older uncles went into pharmacy. My little brother's a dentist. So then they started to go into more of the medical backgrounds. My father was running the pharmacy and I used to help out on weekends and things. And they got into it naturally uh, through, through that aspect. Really enjoyed it, but it was, wasn't... It's partly the medical side, but it's partly the communication skills and the face-to-face. Um, I was really fortunate to work with some of the some of the lecturers from Nottingham University who used to earn a little bit of money on the on the side by locoming as a pharmacist. And I was exposed to some of the greatest pharmacists. Their advice wasn't just here you go, Mr. Smith, here's your tablets one three times a day. It was going into a lot of detail. Um, with about what's happening with their health, why you're taking this, this is how to take it, this is why to take it. Basics like they taught me what do people want to know? They want to take, they want to know what the medicine's for. Is it before food, after food? What to do if they miss a dose? What to do if they get any side effects? What are the expected side effects? They want to know the actual core details. And from that, it taught me about being able to relate and connect to, to patients so much better. And as you know, one of the beauties of my job now is I'm taken away from the, the normal dispensary side of the... Uh, well, actually, we fortunately, we got this new AI computer, which is awesome. So definitely recommend it for any pharmacists out there. Um, it, it frees up lots of time, but it means that I've got time for patients to sit in these beautiful chairs and for me to talk to them and find out about them. And it's a learning process, a two-way process. So I have many patients like yourself, you, you had a lot of knowledge about fitness and health and I learned a lot from that side of it. Um, likewise, I had some knowledge and then through different patients, we we get onto different journeys and, and it was through patients who I found out about NAD. Um, and then you're gonna do, obviously you're gonna do research on it and then do the courses and get to know about it. Mm. The more you go into one direction of sort of longevity and health and you're gonna come across these things. One of the beauties of my job is that in the last two to three years already, what I've learned has taken things even better. So we talked about the Horvath clock, which is a way to actually measure your actual body's age. So it measures your the methylation of your DNA. Um, so if you can take your body back, this is going to sound dead, like like weird, but if you can take your body back in, so you've got one year older, but your body's become two years younger you can do that for a few years within the next five to ten years is going to be even better technology mm. so we can hopefully stay about the same you reckon like that's the peter true? pan effect <laughs> do you reckon that's true i've seen it i see it so i'm now 46 i would say i've got way more energy than i had 20 years ago i would say there's little things that you notice, like your nails are growing quicker. You, if you get a little cut, it heals quicker. Um, your my mind is way more focused. Um, I can, you see me in the gym. I'm there five or six days, and we go hard in the gym every morning. I can do legs two or three times a week now, and I can, I can. It's it's fine. It's like it's it's not even a big thing. I've just had a big holiday away with the lads, and and we partied hard. It was. Yeah, so we, we did really like party hard on that holiday uh, and that's what it's all about. So giving people that that vitality. Mm. So how long have you been in the pharmacy business? About 20 years. 46 now. Did you grow up in the UK? Yeah. You grew up in the UK from Nottingham? Yes. Went to Nottingham University? I went to Aston in Birmingham. Oh, okay. 
So tell me about then, like, did you always know? You just mentioned, obviously, older uncles going to the pharmacy and you started spending weekends there. But so did, before that, when you were, you know, six, seven, eight, and they said, what do you want to be? You go, I want to be a pharmacist. Was that what it was? Or did you want to be a rocket engineer and then suddenly change? I didn't know what I wanted to do. I think I was going to go into property. Um, I, I obviously, as a young lad, I liked my cars and things. I thought I was going to go into some aspects of that. Um, but it was more just the, the family business um, yeah. of that side of it. Um, and then even the natural progression away from pharmacy. So as an example, when I was, I think this is about seven or eight years ago, I got um, eczema myself and um, I didn't realise I didn't understand why. I thought, I'm a pharmacist. I should should know better. Um, had eczema. What's the normal answer? The, the, you go to the doctors. Give, I got a steroid cream and I got a, a moisturizing cream. It works. Covered my body. Did all everything as, as normal. Two weeks later, it comes back. It kept coming back. But this can't be the answer. I've given these creams out to patients. And, and you realize that these are only managing the symptoms. And it was that. Just totally by chance, I was on a skiing holiday. So I had this eczema, I took my creams with me, um, and in a cafe on a ski slope, I overheard a, a gentleman talking, and he was talking about um, skin to this this beautiful young girl. I think he was chatting her up, um, and he was a bit annoyed because I said, can I just bump into this conversation? Can I jump in here? Um, so he was reluctantly he said, yeah. So I got talking to him. And it turns out he was a lecturer giving a, a talk. He was a medical doctor, but he was going down the same type of naturopath, functional medicine. Um, he was giving a talk at, at a conference at this hotel and a ski and, and a ski resort. So we got talking and he told me about that my problem was not to do with my skin, it was to do with my gut health. Mm. And totally thought, how can this be true? But then he gave me some direction of which courses to do and the rest is history. So we did these courses um, and totally re-educated myself. I found out my actual cause was I bought one of these Nutri Bullets, so I was having lots of fruit smoothies, thinking I was being healthy, um, and it was totally the, the wrong thing. All that fructose and mm. fruit sugar was just feeding any bad bacteria uh, in my gut and causing all these problems. The minute I did that and did all the other things that I'd now learned, everything within a month went better, and I had two years of this eczema within a month completely better. Mm, I think I completely relate to this thing. I, Gary Brecker, human biologist, yeah. 10X, you know, Grant Gardo and stuff. I heard him talking about this exact thing. I think it was probably around the time we were started to work together, the methylation process. And he said, for, he was talking about ADHD. And that's why I, was, I think that's yeah. why I first found him. Um, I've diagnosed ADHD, take medication for it. Um, and you spoke about you're not deficient in Ritalin, is what his words. I don't take Ritalin, I take something else. And I'm, it made me think, like, ah, yeah, because the body if it eats steak, beef, it yeah. converts that into the amino acids. I thought, like, well, yeah, I know that. Everything you eat, the raw material, it has to convert what you do into something else to be able to use it. Yeah. So the process of converting that is called methylation, which is what you referenced earlier on. Yeah. There's three com like, compounds that I take natural from Amazon that help with ADHD in terms of the chemical in my brain that's releasing, uh, that's, that's opening thought, so like tabs on a browser or the internet. Yeah. Too many are opening, not enough closing. That is what effectively, and obviously we can get into the trauma of ADHD, like, yeah. you know, Gabor Mate's opinion or this or that. And I think they've all got a place from our predisposition from our genetics, yeah. and then our childhood enables or disables that to a certain degree. But just the part, I think that just enables the methylation or, or disables the methylation process from an early age. And then you, re, like you learn to do that around the things that you're, you've got. Like I, I certainly do. Those three things, again, I took, probably started taking them at the same time-ish that we started the NAD stuff. Yeah. Made in, I still take the ADHD tablets. An enormous difference to my cognitive overwhelm. I think it's not a solution like across the board. I think it's managing, as you sort of said, symptoms or, 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 or root causes. And it is, a, it is a combination of these things, as like you said, like piecing together, because people want a quick fix, right? That's right. And I think I've, of course, like psychologically, I want to hear the marketing that's like, save yourself in five days. But I do know it's a consistent thing, you know, consistent, measurable, and repeated singles you know you're gonna go hit a six with a full bag of nad yeah but every other day you still need to 
watch what you're eating, look at, like you said, fruit. People have such a, a, a conflicted idea about what's actually healthy. And obviously fruit, you know, again, I'm going to get into the debate whether it is or it isn't, but I don't eat fruit really. Um, so not blended fruit because of the stuff that happens to bananas when you eat it raw, uh, like normal versus blended, it changes it whole completely. Um, you asked me about ADHD. You asked me whether it would be a good thing for you to add to the bow because the NHS can't handle the overflow of people with the test, the assessment. Yeah. You asked me about mine. I prayed for it privately and was like the next day. But I remember that after I did mine, I know that lots of people followed suit and there was a massive backlog. This was probably through COVID slash just after COVID. I think people's coping mechanisms were yeah. gone. They yeah. couldn't go out and do the things that they would usually have done. So the people realized, I don't think this was just ADHD. I think it's come you know, across the board of issues came out because of That's COVID fine. and, you know, highlighting them. Did you do that, the ADHD thing? It's on the card. So I'm just waiting for um, accreditation and these things. But the other thing is I'm so busy with fixing people in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the pipeline, but yeah, definitely. I think the current wait is about two and a half years on the NHS, maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. So from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so adult ADHD screening will be coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's, there's just a huge amount of people out there who are undiagnosed or or would benefit from this so yeah hopefully mm. soon so talked about nad talked about your functional approach to this talked about being more than a pharmacist in terms of your approach to things how does it sort of work if someone's listening to this and they're thinking okay so i come for an, an iv like is there like the, the energy or the endurance booster you do obviously offer that the first treatment thing, yeah. but you're really trying to get to know someone, right? That's right. So tell me how it works. If someone comes to sit in your chair, they've heard this, they're like, oh, I'll have a vitamin booster, do that, or I'll have an NAD. Tell us about how that process works in terms of your head and what you're trying to get from them and ascertain and what they could like to expect. Good starting point is the consultation. We'll, we'll definitely have a, a detailed consultation. Find out the health score. So, so what do you score your health, and what are the main factors for for you to, yeah, have you got any ongoing illness? Is there any tiredness, insomnia, uh, brain fog, any of these things, any skin issues? So, we'll we'll look at that. Also, then the safety side of it. So, your liver and kidneys in good shape, if necessary, the blood test necessary to to double check that. So, from that, we have an idea and and to be honest one of the biggest starting points is education so you'll often see me give out links to pod, podcast with uh, for patients on certain health issues or there's is um, a really good book there the health fix by dr ian panja one of the most amazing concise books and it's so people realize it's not just me saying this this is some of the the world experts mm. this is a, a really experienced gp who couldn't fix people's problems so They'll go with this information. Um, sometimes we'll start off with the supplements that we recommend. Sometimes I just want them to think about it and do their own research. So they understand that it's not just me selling things. Mm. And it's a business, but I'm also an ethical business. So I want people to, to understand why I'm saying things. Um, like for example, yesterday, a lady came to me and we'd had the initial consultation yesterday. She'd done all of the things I said and wrote down all the, the health aspects, a diet, a diet plan. Um, a, di a diary of all these things and then we, we made a plan so we've got some IVs booked in um, she went away with the right supplements the right dose the right brands of vitamin D probiotics um, like we do an NAD type tablet which is a, like a starting point um, for this um, and guaranteed it's a beautiful moment when I see people sat in my chairs and and I know that that journey is starting. And then I see them eight weeks later, a year later, and got some beautiful messages on my phone of people to say this was such a, an amazing thing. I had a lady who she was already, I think, in her late 60s, and her husband had passed away about 10 years ago, a huge stressful event. It was a, um, not good circumstances how it happened. Massive stressful event, obviously had a knock-on effect with her health, and she was looking forward to her retirement. And what happened was her health went completely downhill from being really active in the garden, her own cooking, very independent, mobile, the health like with the tiredness and all of the different aspects. So she, she became really fatigued and confused with all these different factors. 
um she came in for something totally different i think it was i think it was a, a mild eczema rash or an allergic reaction from that conversation um i often take people in the consultation room. it's a bit more discreet and i can i've got a bit more time with them as well I had a conversation a year or two ago spoke to her about gut health and these issues and when we did the quick timeline it was oh yeah so her husband had passed away this has had this effect this is what to do to fix it and then she sent me a message recently to say the last 10 years have been some of the the worst decade of her life in terms of her health and then since she's met me things are fixed and she's actually really looking forward to her retirement now unfortunately it's without a, a husband but in terms of her health mm. it has completely changed and she said the next decade is going to be so much different because of that chance meeting mm. sometimes they call it chance but mm. it's hard to say um, and i've got so many different patients who now they've got back on track and they've had to give up I had one lady she was doing a nursing course and had to give it all up and now she's back on this one guy who was um, a plumber amazing plumber but because of his health he was um really tired all the time he had such bad joint aches and things it was nad that fixed him and it was i needed some advice i think it was christmas um a couple of years back and i um our boiler broke a, a few days before christmas wow it's going to cost me a fortune i've got to get this fixed text him and said look i did what adv i need some advice what can i do he came around fixed it and he was so grateful i was grateful because mm. we'd fixed him and he was available to help me when when mm. i needed it but so many stories of people who it's like a carousel we see people come onto the journey they fix and then they've got the knowledge to fix themselves for the rest of their lives mm. you mentioned the universe there last time literally last week when i was at your place we got into the right universe stuff tell us about your beliefs around you know whether things are chance meetings or whether they are part of a bigger so i'm from a scientific background so we don't really believe in in all these these chance things however this there's definitely higher powers out there even like karma um definitely believe that when when things just just they're, they're way more than coincidence they they can't be um coincidence by all these things happening even like things like believing in god how how do we know that this is true but there's so many things that i've 46 i've seen a lot of things in my life and so many things are like how has that happened that is that's way too spooky to be a coincidence. Someone was on here the other day and they asked me, do you think things happen for a reason or we give a reason for what have, what's happened? It's true. So maybe we try and justify things, um, but there's just way too many coincidences that I've, I've seen. Mm. Um, definitely when we... There are things like kindness. Kindness has a, a knock-on effect and you do something good and then someone else... Um, it has an effect on other people. Do you think it's because you're putting out the energy into the world of, you know, and you mentioned karma. You, just that story you're referring to about the the lady who lost her husband 10 years ago. Some of the indirect consequences. So, for example, I remember when COVID happened, I still was driving to train yeah. most days, which is blessed with the situation I was in. But when I stopped traveling that 45 minutes in the car, and I used to do a, a Facebook Live in the car to a private group, Unpacking my mind to camera to talk to the, the guys in my private community helped me so much more than I recognized until it wasn't there. Yeah. So, for example, if that couple, you know, that went for walks regularly, yeah. it could be the walk, it could be the exercise, it could be the sunlight, it could be this, it could be that. Same as what you know, happens in the winter. Yeah. Indirect things or direct things cause other things, which cause other things, which cause other things. Being kind to people means that the, the, so I heard someone once talking about like lily pads of luck more likely to land on one you're doing better things and working hard yeah you're not, you know you're, not, you're more lucky you're just more likely because you've done more stuff therefore yeah. you're going to be more likely for that to happen and then you notice what you've noticed versus when you don't do you agree with that definitely um i think if you're surrounded by the right people you're giving out the right vibe and um, more receptive to things then then yeah it makes a difference one of the biggest change life-changing things that happened to me was uh, a a friend of mine i think this is pretty much 10 years ago that he introduced me to a group that do some charity cooking for the homeless in, in nottingham um got involved in that just a one-off meeting the people i met on that um in the first few weeks of going to that completely changed my life they were people who took the time out to volunteer nowadays to get people to do things without a free buffet or 
free drinks and things, they're reluctant to go. Whereas these people are taking time out of their busy lives to come and cook in the kitchen and wash up and pack this food and take it into town for, for the homeless. Well, this is actually quite a, a good environment and we had a laugh and I also learned a little bit of cooking as well. There were some really good um, cooks and catering people who were also helping out there. So I learned a lot of skills there. From that, that springboarded into being surrounded by these people three times a week um, who would all naturally like, like, there were some people who were like, I've been washing up next to someone and oh, what do you do? I'm a barrister, I'm this. I was like, wow, mm. yet they've taken the time out to do this. You never know what circumstances but they, they've they've done this. From that, we did Tough Mudders. We did lots of other sort of charity work. Um, but yeah, I think that was one of the things. And exactly what you were saying, I think by surrounding yourself by the right people, the right circumstances, from that is springboarded into to other aspects. Yeah, like I met you through the internet, like I said. You directed me to someone else on Instagram, Jake Joel Physio. Um, and I've seen him and obviously become good friends with him. You joined David Lloyd because I told you about it. Yep. You, were, you were going to a 24-hour gym, right? And you were like, yeah. oh, it's not open early enough. And I was like, mate, it's the best decision you'll ever make. And I was in the spiral, wasn't I, when you came around for your tour. I was like, hey, you listened. Now you're a David Lloyd member, right? Yes. Tell us about who you've met and the kind of, kinds of people you've met since being there. Very different from my other gym, which was a 24-hour gym in a, in a student area in a city, Nottingham. Um, so it's the type of place where you have to, you definitely want to leave your bag out. <laughs> um, and I mean, I have met some good friends there, but yes, you have to just be a bit more careful and none of the lockers are working and things like that. Um, David Lloyd has been absolutely amazing for me because just the conversations is a lot more chilled. Obviously there is a lot more affluent people, um, who, who go there, but it was just being in, in that environment, um, it has been awesome. But I've met some really good business people. And, and one thing that you notice is everyone seems to be well connected. So if I need a plaster, if I need a plumber, or I had a, a need a driveway doing, I need something, there's someone who's already knows somebody. Uh -huh. um, and they're always talking about, oh, these are the latest, these headphones are good for this reason, or this watch, this sports um, watches, or this monitor is good for this reason. So. It's a whole different thing. But yeah, it's introduced me to some absolutely amazing people. Mm. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Obviously, most of the people I know who've come on here of a certain nature of, of, go to David Lloyd. That exactly reason, I think, you, well, obviously, the common phrase, you become the sum of the average of the five people you surround yourself with. Yeah. I think it's wider than that. I think the atmosphere and the environment you put yourself in and like the things that you're trying to strive, like you're obviously very interested in health. Yeah. Other people are much more interested in finance and other, you know, niches and genres and i think that connection and the collaboration between people when you have a good network of people like you said whether it's driveways plumbers or health people yeah because that trust factor makes quite a difference the likelihood that someone's going to even give you the time of day to hear the spiel is so much more likely because someone's going to tell them about it than them finding you themselves whether that's from your direct marketing or them searching like i did yeah how do you think this plays into your bigger business goals obviously you've come on here today you've even spoke about potentially doing your own podcast talking about some of these topics and, and teaching and educating how do you well, what's in store for you with your career over the next 12 months so it's a, a, a different set of circumstances happening at the moment in the world of pharmacy so the actual nhs side of pharmacy is making a loss for so as you People might know Lloyd's Pharmacy just sold up all their pharmacies. Boots are about to sell up lots of pharmacies. And I, and I won't be surprised that Boots start closing lots and lots of pharmacies. It, you give out a medicine and we're literally making a loss. We get reimbursed less than what we give it out for. That can't be sustained. So that's wow. going to finish. Um, so hence why I do all the private services, um, which is more rewarding, but in both ways, financially and for... Um, terms of fixing people mm. um, but what's also unique that's never happened before so the pharmacists do four-year degree and then they do a year training and then they're normally giving out medicines and doing all the normal pharmacy things the, the pharmacists that are going to qualify next year are going to be the fir for the first time they're going to be prescribing pharmacists they're already going to be way more clinically trained so my goal at the moment is to set up services and a whole model for them they don't want to come out of university with all these skills and go and check a basket of prescriptions and be 
talking to, to Betty about uh, a blood pressure tablets just briefly. They want to be using these skills and been doing blood tests and consultations and fixing people. And I'll be able to offer a service to say, right, you can do gut health analysis, you can do this ADHD screening, you can do the aesthetics, you can do IV drips and have the knowledge. And also I'll have negotiated discounts with the right companies. Spoke to a company yesterday about branding our gut health um, testing. Um, so yeah, so that's where I'm heading with that. Um, also, just to, yeah, and taking the, the, the vitamin drips further in terms of packages, and I think that's a good idea. That's one of the, the beauties that, like, you taught me about why don't you do this, why don't you do packages, and I've, I've had some amazing business life coaching people sat in my chair, so I might as well make the most of it. Mm, yeah, that's the same as me, talking to people, you know, like you, you give me so much value in well directly but also just from it being there i wouldn't be there if it wasn't providing me the thing yeah and it's like putting yourself in those environments to be open to people's knowledge like you just said i don't know if people are doing that enough i think people are always looking for the direct thing they can get back one of the things i when i you know, share with people with you i talk about what you did for me and how you, there wasn't a direct thing that you said you wanted to fight, learn a lot about it but the right people that you do things for and you open doors for or you you work with the things whether it's the universe or not people are holding that in mind i think a lot of people are looking for the thing they can get back from people yeah versus what they can give versus like how can this serve a bigger purpose because what you know you asked me about that the, the branching out the sort of franchise thing the, the education arm yeah but quite a long conversation about Obviously, I don't know about it from the medical side. I certainly don't know about the NHS side of things or private you know, health at all. I do know how business models work. Yeah. And, and I just run through a, if this, then that. If this, though, then that. And then you obviously came to the conclusion, well, that makes sense then. Yeah. Doing that, is that turning you more into like a business consultancy, helping people to transition through leaving university and then helping them set up? You can see it as the business side and obviously we are running a business but in another way it's just a natural progression and it's scaling what i'm doing so i'm doing this in a small pharmacy in nottingham in the back rooms there yeah we're busy but it's still limited by the space i've got four to six people in one go i can i can do imagine if most high street pharmacies would offer the ability to diagnose and fix people with all of this functional medicine approach that would be an amazing thing that would take things instead of just going to your pharmacy for your normal cough medicines and this thing yes there's some new there's a scheme called pharmacy first where they do some basic things for ear infections and um a, a few basic sort of things to take a bit of stress off from the doctor to free up capacity um but imagine if we could offer all these services that would be Wow, it, is, it would be unbelievable to be able to offer this across would, the country. Would that also be something that would take a lot of the strain off the NHS with some of the things, people not going there? 100%. So if we can avoid it, firstly, to free up doctor's appointments. So if somebody has these issues, already someone comes in with chest infection um, or certain aches and pains or skin conditions, I've now trained i've done my prescribing course so i can diagnose them if they need a prescription we can do a prescription so we do that side but long term if we're preventing diabetes we're decreasing the cancer risk um, and taking away all these these things so that's got a lot of, like imagine what a, a diabetic they're going to be costing the, the government thousands and thousands over over the course of their lifetime and even high blood pressure or heart disease hospital time and surgery and all these aspects um it's going to free up lots of things and definitely want to encourage more people to to get into preventative medicine why wait for for things to happen mm. dementia autoimmune disease those things don't happen overnight they they take years to to start happening in the body so let's fix these earlier on and hopefully yeah people can live longer um, we've got all these things like with a uh, what's the word for it population crisis like populations going down um so people can live longer and work longer and have good health mm. like the blue zone people and and that's an amazing thing so you fix lots of people 
you do all the tests and you help them to get back to good health. Tell me what it felt like when you got your test results back and they weren't good. From long days in the studio, juggling all the moving parts of life, I've come to realize that how you get there is just as important as where you're going. That's why having the support of Ross and his team at Pfizer has been a step up for us. Ross has been with us from the start, hooking us up with the ultimate VIP experience for our podcast launch party. We've cruised in style in the Mercedes vans with the starlight twinkly roof, and we felt like movie stars. Pfizer rides come with all the bells and whistles, reclining chairs, fold-down TVs, games consoles, and Apple TV. Whether you need a five-seater, a six-seater, or an exclusive car, they've got you covered. These vehicles really do make you feel like a VIP from the start to the finish. Perfect for special events, big nights out, or even airport transfers, Pfizer are my first choice. And just for To The Heart of It listeners, Ross has put together a special offer. Just visit thehardfitpodcast.com forward slash sponsors to grab your exclusive Pfizer offer code. A huge thanks to Ross and the Pfizer team for making our podcast launch party an incredible journey and truly unforgettable. So you fix lots of people, you do all the tests and you help them to get back to good health. Tell me what it felt like when you got your test results back and they weren't good. So, yeah, that was, I did a blood test on a patient. I thought I haven't done one on myself for years. Um, let me just um, do one on myself. I did my blood test and I think it was like partly during the COVID. It was pre, like just before the, the main COVID part. Um, I did a blood test and I was pre-diabetic or close to be becoming diabetic. A bit of a shock. I'd put on a few pounds. The gyms were closed for a while. Lots of patients were giving us biscuits and we had a coffee machine as having caramel latte coffees and, <laughs> and all these things. Um, so I understood why it was happening, but it was just a bit of a shock that actually here's my, it's called HbA1c. It tells you an average of your diabetes, your sugar levels over the last few months. Um, so you can't fake it. You can't, it's not like on a snapshot of that day. Um, so just again, I had a patient um, who was, uh, he's a, a doctor. Um, and he and he had a, a conversation with me, and I was talking to him about. So this is my situation with my diabetes. Is what's important to you in your? What's the most important thing? And I said, family, my daughter, my my first child. She's like one of the most important people in in my life. He said, Do you want to be there for the biggest decisions? Times when she needs you in your life. Do you want to be here or do you want to be watching from up above? Of course, I want to be here. He said, statistically, if you let your diabetes carry on or become uncontrolled, then you lose around about 10 years of your life through different um, conditions that happen uh, along with diabetes. That really hit me hard. I was like, whoa, I want to be there for my family. And that, that was one of the biggest life-changing things. Gave up my caramel latte straight away. Um, definitely more conscious and then looked into how to reverse it. And you've got a three to six month window to reverse your diabetes with certain ways of looked at insulin resistance and, and all the different aspects and did that touch wood. It, it worked. It got me out of the danger zone. Um, and definitely with all the other things I've progressed with, it's, it's put me in a, a much better place. Mm, hearing that makes me want to have a blood test just to find out where, if I'm all right. Do you think you're all right? Do you physically feel... Well, I kind of, I'm not sure if I physically feel all right, to be honest, but I'm used to carrying on with, you know, pains, aches and ailments. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Because when someone puts it like that to you, you think, oh, shit. Hmm. Speaking of the, uh, the high street pharmacy stuff, I remember, I think I told you, we, we were looking at a healthcare solution during COVID. We started talking about um, the domiciliary care issue in terms of people staffing. And Amazon do a great thing with Amazon Flex in terms of parcel delivery. Yeah. If people haven't, haven't heard of this, you can literally register your right to work and your driving license on an app and you can go as once approved to pick up parcels. You can say Wednesday next week, 9 till 12, go to the depot, you scan the barcode, they give you the parcels, you drop them off and the map comes up on the phone, you get paid the next week. Great thing from them to obviously last mile delivery, they were all over it. And we thought, can we take that model and put that across the healthcare space? Obviously that idea, you know, went, from tiny little idea to an enormous thing as if they do. And I, you know, we started making an app, had a board wall. The regulatory issues were so large, especially for me, not with a healthcare background of what if you put someone into someone's home and they're vulnerable and data and yeah. it was a lot. I think the premise was, was interesting. And when you were talking there, made me think about, we spoke about wearable devices. 
So there's obviously the emergency things that people wear if they fall over and they're on their own or they, you know, we can tell what tell they are in the room and blah, blah. You having people, if you were to scale that franchise model or your own brand model across the UK, yeah. the amount of data that could come out, for example, what Zoe are doing with those sorts of functional gut tests and stuff, yeah. is absolutely... If you had a blended algorithm, that is worth one not only financially to ph pharmaceutical companies a fortune. In terms of health long term, could be life changing, game changing. Have you thought about that? Not really thought about that aspect, but yes, that's what I'm op always open to different avenues of how this can can work and be sort of scaled up. I just think I'll say I wear this as a whoop, and I wear the Garmin also. The amount of data that's coming off those that are able to be API'd off in terms of the data can be pulled off that and into another system. The amount of things these are looking at, coupling that with medical records, coupling that with then data science, yeah. there's a lot of things that could be done if you're the one hands-on doing the treatment. Because if you were to have, you know, 10 of me and you would knew all of what I was doing and at this moment this happened, when I had this thing that happened, when you tried this thing that happened, when I went on holiday there that happened, the things that could be produced from that would be unparalleled because you haven't first you know, what we, you know, user data, source data, which is very rare to get. A lot of data coming off these platforms are from, you know, mined spreadsheets or old data they've stolen, borrowed, begged, or whatever. But getting it from the source is... It would be amazing. Um, I've, I've read something um, not too long ago. It was talking about in, in the future, they're going to be able to predict with, with all this data, Exactly what you just said, you can you could be able to tell. So when people do certain things, they had a heart attack or this was like predicting when this was going to happen or strokes or different aspects. Um, and like the Zoe monitor, it's or telling you this inside tracker, there's different ones and, and it's telling you certain things individual to you. Sweet potato for me, for example, was worse than normal potato mm. or certain things like orange juice, a uh, glass of orange juice was way worse than a vodka and coke for me. Mm. It was just different. Everyone's different. If you can get that data and, and take it further, it is, especially with AI as well now, mm. they can put all that data together and, and, and really analyse it and use it. it, it yeah, so it's, it's exciting. Mm. It's exciting, to be honest. Do you think the AI is scary in the medical field? Yes and no. So... People are worried, is it going to take jobs jobs away? Is it going to replace things? Um, can AI have a, a consultation and get the right vibe and the right feel from a patient? Sometimes there's a lot of unsaid things and sometimes someone's talking to me about certain things, but I can tell that there's more to it and that's where my next focus question will go down mm -hmm. this route. Um, but I have to be delicate and sometimes people don't really want to release certain information. Would a computer be able to sense that and to to do that um and i'm i'm wondering whether a, a ai computer can put a cannula in someone's arm mm -hmm. and it find a vein better than i can um so there's there's that aspect but at the same time we just talked about how it can analyze data um one of the exciting things um from ai is predicting so at the moment you do clinical trials on people um, and then there are some computer simulations, but they can do way more testing and hopefully bring out drugs quicker if they can predict how, look at the body as a system, mm. um, a computer can analyse this is the likely side effects, this is there, and then hopefully they can test it on fewer people or, or speed up the whole process. Where can people find you if they want to either check you out as a person or check the company out and the pharmacy out? Use your Google Glasshouse Chemist and we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on... What's um, your Instagram? Um, it's Glasshouse Chemist and also Glasshouse Eye Vitamin um, on I'll Instagram. I'll link them on the screen so people can see them. If people mention uh, to the heart of it, you're going to make sure they're sorted out? 100%. Yeah, how many people have come to you since, from me, who've said they've had ridiculous results? Countless. But one, one of the best things about David Lloyd or any sort of... Um, the gym especially has been word of mouth. I think mm. when someone's seen the benefits and they've felt it, um, there's, there's as much marketing as I can do if someone who they trust and has seen the benefits has said, this was awesome, I felt this. That's been yeah, invaluable. Mm. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate Thank you it. very much. Cheers.